Your Highness, Sheikh Mohammed Zaid, who is the president of the Arab, United Arab Emirates, Your Majesty, King Charles III, Secretary General of the United Nations, Your Excellencies, Presidents and Heads of State. An African woman from Kenya, Vangadi Matai, who received the Nobel Peace Award, synthesized very well the dilemma of humanity and its relationship with nature. She said, the generation that destroys the environment is not the generation that will pay for the price. The IPCC has warned us that we only have till the end of this decade to avoid that the global temperature would go beyond one and a half degrees above the pre-industrial levels. 2023 was already, is already the hottest year in the last 125,000 years. Humanity suffers with drought, floods, and heat waves that are more extreme and frequent. In the north of Brazil, the Amazon region suffers one of the most tragic droughts of its history. In the south, we are facing tempests and hurricanes that lead along a lot of destruction and death. Science and reality show us that this time we will have to pay the, for the price. Now, the planet is not waiting anymore to demand from the next generation. The planet is tired of climate agreements that were not fulfilled and goes to reduce neglected carbon emissions and the financing of to the poor punch never comes. Eloquent and empty speeches. We need concrete actions. How many world leaders, in fact, are committed to save the planet? Only last year, the world had spent more than $2 trillion in weapons, amounts that could be invested to fight hunger and to confront the climate change issue. How many tons of carbon was emitted that we had were emitted uh, by missiles that cruise over the skies and fall over innocent civilians, mainly children that are hungry? The count that has to be paid for the climate change is not the same for all. And the first one to pay for the price is the poorest population. The 1% richest part of the planet emits the same volume of carbon than 66% of the population. Well, rural workers that have their plantations, subsistence plantation devastated by drought cannot feed any more their families. Dwellers in the peripheries of the big cities that lose a little bit what they have when the floods come and destroys everything, furniture, homes, pets, and their sons. The injustice that penalize the younger generation is only one of the faces of the inequalities that affect us. The world naturalized the disparities that are unacceptable in terms of income, gender, and race. I can't imagine to confront the climate change without fighting inequalities. Who are uh, those that are in hunger have their existence imprisoned by the pain in the present and becomes incapable to think about the future, about tomorrow. To reduce socioeconomic vulnerability means to build resilience vis-a-vis -vis the extreme events. It also means that we should have the conditions to redirect all the endeavors to fight global warming. In 2009, when I participated at the COP15 in Copenhagen, the architecture of the climate change convention was almost in collapse. The negotiations failed, and it was necessary a great effort to recover the trust and reach to the Paris Agreement in 2015. Coming back to the presidency in Brazil, 
I can see that today we are in a similar situation. Uh, the non-fulfillment of the commitments that were taken erodes the credibility of the regime. It is necessary to rescue the belief in multilateralism. It is unexplainable that the UN, although all the endeavors, it shows itself incapable to keep peace simply because some of its members profit from war. It is regrettable that the agreements from the Kyoto Protocol of 1997 or the Paris agreements of 2015 are not being implemented. The rulers cannot exempt themselves from their responsibilities. No country will solve their problems alone. We are all obliged to act together beyond our borderlines. Brazil is willing to lead as a role model. And we adjusted our climate change, uh, climate change goals, and they're the most ambitious ones that many developed countries have. We have reduced drastically the deforestation of the Amazon region, and we will have zero deforestation until 2030. We have formulated an ecological transformation plan to promote green industrialization, low carbon agriculture, and and bioeconomy. We have forged a common vision with the Amazon countries and we built bridges with other countries that detain tropical forests. The world is already convinced of the potential of the renewable sources of energy. Now is the time to face the debate about the slow motion pace of the decarbonization of the planet and to work towards an economy that will be less reliant on fossil fuel. We have to do it, and in a way that is urgent and fair. Let's work in a constructive way with all countries to pave the way between this COP28 and COP30 that we will host in the heart of the Amazon tropical forest. We do not have two planet Earths. We are a unique species called humanity. All of us aim to, have, to make the world capable to host with dignity the totality of their inhabitants and, only a privilege, and not only a privileged minority. So I'd like to invite, as Pope Francis said, we are all brothers. We need to live in fraternity. Thank you very much.